lagi Cukulah kau dapatkan diri lagi Kau kaya Hello, welcome to another episode of Tiger Belly. I'm your, I'm your host, Baba Lai. And we've got Vladimir Zhushinkich, <laughs> of, of correspondence from Russia. Popov Smirnov. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? That look. Oh, That's God. just two different vodkas, but Popov much cheaper. <laughs> yeah. We've got... Both uh, Russian, I know. Both from potatoes. Yeah. We got fancy, fancy over there. Wow. I like your bandana, bro. I gave that to him. You did? Hello. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Captain. I love it a lot, too. <laughs> yeah. We've got um, Kalila, my, my girlfriend and co-host. Beautiful as ever. <laughs> and uh, we've got me, one of the, one of the ones. Mm. I'm one of the ones, guys. Um, I like to start off by saying that um, Big Ed, go fuck yourself, my friend. What uh, happened? Whoa, what happened? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, well, I, I, so um, whoa, uh, hello, hello. Um, hello, he, Big Ed. He, so what happened was, um, so I'm a big fan of um, 90 Day Fiance, and mm-hmm. uh, before the 90 Days, and there's this gentleman by the name of Big Ed that's on it, and he's. Um, um, on it with uh, someone that re- closely resembles somebody that we know, um, Juliana. <laughs> and uh, in fact, if that doesn't work out, I'm gonna try to pimp out Juliana. Oh, just for- I, she's the perfect age. That's great. You're a matchmaker. Yeah, she's, she, she, she's the perfect. She age. hasn't even had a debut. What's a debut? Debut <gasps> is like a cotillion when you turn 18. It's like a quinceanera, but then it's a you don't have it until you're 18. And then in the Filipino culture, um, you it. You have 18 <laughs> roses and 18 candles, right? <laughs> Look at her. She's so angry. And at Are your you birthday party. One? At your you birthday party. one for her? No, no, no. She already turned 18. Yeah. Um, oh. But um, you have 18 candles and 18 roses. You have 18 guys you have to dance with. And then 18 girls mm-hmm. that are part of your, like, cotillion party. Your coming out party. Don't get me wrong. I'm not Ed. The contract that we have with Ed and, and Juliana is there's going to be no sex. She's going to be st- stay a virgin for the rest of her life. Okay. Don't shave your legs, Jules. Yeah. In fact, I've I've created a metallic hymen. Oh. Let's just I have a little workshop. Yeah, yeah. So I've been you know constructing. (laughs) I have a little yeah. I have a little workshop. I have a little metallic hymen that I go over her over her other hymen. Yeah. Right. So that it just no one's gonna penetrate it. The only one that could is Colossus, maybe from. Um, X Men. X Men. Great ride on Six Flags. <laughs> yeah, it's a great ride on Six Flags. But yeah, so there's no fuck. But see, here's what happened with Ed, Big Ed. So I guess I've been making fun of him, you know, saying that he has no neck and that he looks mm-hmm. like a candle melting or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I think that you know, I started the I started the war. Mm-hmm. He drew first blood. I drew first blood, and then he said, I guess this is what I get from um, other Tiger Belly fans that one of in, in one of his Instagram lives, he said that. Kalila was too hot for me. Whoa. Low You've blow DVD ASA days. Oh, from blow. him? From, yeah, from Ed. Yeah, from, yeah, Ed. from Ed. <laughs> I know. Oh, that I, is I an know. From Ed? Well, burnt, and then when you, she told me that, I was in a depression for how long, babe? I, I was pondering it for a couple hours. Going, this fucking guy, I'm going to bring him down. I'm going to destroy him or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what goes through my mind? Extort him for what? <laughs> No, destroy him. I mean, not extort oh. him. Destroy him. You know, I was like in my mind, I was like, I was gonna set him up with like this fucking virgin girl that I have living in my house and stuff and yeah. whatnot. But like now, I'm like, it's terrible. I know, but sh- you you mind your own business, okay? So my, and but <laughs> then in my head, I'm like, oh well, now I'm gonna take that away from him. <laughs> you know, but um, but then I realized that I drew first blood. I called him a melting man. I called him a thick mm-hmm. neck guy. You called him neck- no neck necklace necklace. And then um, he, so I started, the, so uh, you know what, let's, you know, let's call a truce. You know, I started the war. Uh, I would still love Ed on Tiger Belly. That'd be nice. No, I'm yep. Team Rosemary. So I are you. Too. I am too. We're we'll Team Rosemary in this we'll house. Both. No, because she, I guess, did a Instagram live where she said something where. Oh, yeah, I saw that. She said something along the lines of like, he did this like solely for TV purposes. He's a liar. Mm. Like he never like. Don't don't believe what he says. Like when he s- allegedly like spent money on her. Yeah. She's like she, he bought me bra and panty and that's all. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, what she said. Yeah. And then so I'm standing, Rosemary. Also, she let that guy inside of her. Oh, that's so sad. You know what I mean? 
what if his what if his dick is like his neck mm-hmm. where there's no stem? Mm-hmm. It's no just shaft? it's just like balls and then just the head. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so weird. So, an so like that, liter- a literal clit. A literal yeah, it, clit. It, and when it gets hard, just the head gets bigger. No, Gilb, he's saying that the balls are attached to the dick so that upon entry, the balls go in as well. It probably looks like uh, a mushroom. You know what I mean? Like well, a, don't all penises look like mushrooms? Yeah, but the stem, like not even just a regular, what is it, portobello or... Oh, portobello is very yeah. big portobello. and wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah, what his but dick But not too much like, of a yeah. stem, though. Yeah, I no stem, portobello. I think you're talking about oyster <laughs> mushrooms. Yeah, mine is like that. You know those little Japanese mushrooms. Which oh, ones? Cute. Oh, <laughs> you, you mean, the thin ones. The, the little, thin ones that you put in. Yeah, yeah, that's what mine did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nokis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The little Nokis. I was gonna yeah. say porcini, but <laughs> oh, that, oh, all right. Well, I should uh, just flatten. Maybe I'll upgrade. Dangling. Upgrade my dick, but um. Not upgrade. So dick, also, man. um, I'm very sad right now because of the fact that I'm on. I think I'm on my last. Mission on the mm. Witcher 3. You know, I've been playing this game for a couple of weeks all day. I know, George, you're interested. But, RPGs, um, yeah. Yeah, but I really love the game. I never played it before. And uh, I've upgraded all my... I have all the Witcher gear. I've, I've, I have a Grandmaster Urson armor, Grandmaster Wolven armor, Grandmaster Jeez. Cat School armor. <laughs> I have, I've gone to every single question mark on the fucking maps. I've done every mission... And uh, I have the greatest swords that you could possibly have in the game. And I'm on my last mission. It's very sad. It's a very good game. I just, I, I'm at the Isle of Mists, and I found Ciri and, uh, and those 12 dwarves. And I'm bringing her back to Kaer Morton for the big uh, hunt. And so um, it's very Wait, sad. Wait, there's a Ciri? She's, she, you know, on the show, you know, the, I saw all the Witcher sh- the show on Netflix. Oh, you- you How do you spell it. her name? Oh, C-I-R-I. Oh, it's not Siri's oh, choice. Not Siri, yeah. So Siri is uh, in the show, but she's also in the game. And she's a focal point point of the game. She's, uh, But you play as, obviously, the Witcher, you know. And then Yennefer, you know, she's great. But um, it's a great game. If you, ever never play, if you like RPGs, it's a really, <laughs> really good game. It's 2015. I know I'm probably late. I'm late to the game. I'm late mm-hmm. to the game, but I'm really sad. So I need um, Tiger Belly fans to tell me what games... Um, to play, I, I'm a big. I like Skyrim. I like Witcher. I mm-hmm. like things that I can explore caves and open up chests and upgrade. And I love all that kind of stuff. Mm. Okay. And so, Gilbert, you're getting the game as well, right? I'm gonna get it. Yep. Yeah. It's coming, should be so coming ho- this week. So hopefully, you know, you'll you know do all the little things in it like I did. You will you? I'll try. I tried doing no. it for Red Dead. That was very hard. Did to you finish every, Red- like, every? I finished it. The story was great. I yeah. cried during that. That was great. But to catch every single like bear pelt like what you did, that yeah. is so time consuming. I it's so time consuming. Yeah, I get, I get, yeah, I get why Kalida loved it so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Rudy, Rudy, do yeah. you, you want to come get the cat, please? Yeah, Rudy, get the fucking cat. Oh, everyone. Gets uh, excited so Rudy here's too. another thing is um, <laughs> that last night, so what we've been doing in quarantine <laughs> is we've yeah. been um, we've been watching a lot of things, and uh, mm-hmm. last night, you know, we made. Um, Little Jules here, uh, watch the movie The Arrival. <gasps> and I don't know if you've ever seen the movie The Arrival, but I believe that it's up there with 2001 Space Odyssey. It's up there with the original Blade Runner. It's up there. It's a classic sci fi masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. It's great. Have you seen it? Oh, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Have you seen it, uh, no. Vladimir? <laughs> Vladimir, you've Vlad. never seen The Arrival? No. Oh, my God. It is so fucking good. Come um, on, Vladdy. And the reason why I watched it again last night was because our friend Kevin Christie, who's a comic actor, he's an artist. You know, he he's the one that designed the uh, first album cover of the Kings of Leon album cover. Kevin Christie, that's his... He did the artwork. Um, he's somebody I trust. Um, him and I are trying to work on a special together. And he saw, he said, I've been wa- that's all I've been watching. He goes, I watched it seven times in a row. And wow. so then I, it kind of went, oh, yeah, that movie was amazing, right? And so we saw it again last night. And Jules didn't understand it. But um, she was confused. Her, her, her island eyes were like, doink, doink, doink. I don't know nothing. Oink, oink, oink. Yeah, yeah, doink, doink, doink. She yeah. understood it just fine. <laughs> and she loved it. Yeah, yeah. But 
there's a point in the movie where it gets really emotional. Mm-hmm. And in the dark, Kalila and I looked at each other and we were both crying. Like we did in the movie theater. Like in, in the, the movie, movie theater, theater, we were holding crying. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Because it was just such a revelation. Throughout the whole movie, you think Don't one give it thing. Away. Don't give it away. And then it turns out to be another. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. just at that moment when you realize it's something else. It's yeah. when the tears start welling. If you haven't seen the movie, it's here's the here's the pacing is good. It's shot well. The music. The mus- sound design and the music yeah. is exceptional, but character design in terms of alien, spacecraft, all that kind of stuff oh, is so original and so pause. so great. So great and 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 uh, creative. I remember I, thinking after I watched it a couple of years ago that I that I would never ever eat octopus or squid again. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then yeah. I had already stopped eating octopus and squid before that. Yeah, remember that one time we mm-hmm. ate. So we, there was this restaurant on Fairfax. Mm-hmm. This is after. Remember that where restaurant we went to and we ordered octopus and it was frozen. Oh, it was like frozen octopus. No, it was it it <laughs> was on Fairfax. I think yeah. they're closed now. Yeah, they should be closed. It was the worst restaurant we ever been to. And, and all and of then, LA. And also, when I ordered it, he kind of went. He the waiter was like, "We have that." Oh my gosh! Like you that was his reaction. I'm like, well, yeah, we'll have the this octopus. And he was like, "What?" And he looked at the menu. He goes, "Oh, da, 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 da. oh yeah, oh, no. we have, we do have that, right?" Which means that's a bad sign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which means that they have to go and find it. No, that's because you you ordered. You said, "Can I have octopus?" And in the menu, it said pulpo, which is Spanish. He for should know it. what fucking pulpo is, man. <laughs> You had to look it up on Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then when it came, it was frozen solid. Like they didn't like it, it, when they went into the middle of it. Yeah. It was like, all ice. <laughs> they said, "Ah, fuck it." <laughs> yeah, fuck it. You know what I mean? So it was really terrible. What but, do you think the guy his his uh, thought process while he was preparing this dead frozen <laughs> octopus I don't in the know. back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I you know it's like I love bad service. <laughs> like remember, like there's this restaurant called um, BCD. It? BCD, right? BCD Tofu House. <laughs> yeah, there's one. <laughs> the where the we place went, itself, we love. We love but there BCD. Was just one server. But there's this one server who, when he gave us the plate, he he threw it like a frisbee. And it was a hot <laughs> yeah, he, ball he, of, <laughs> of and, it went, and it hit against the uh, the table. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it splattered. It splattered all over the place. And then he just looked at us, right, like with really mean eyes. To say sorry or nothing, and he just kind of walked away. And I started laughing because I'm like, that guy right there is gonna get a really good tip. Yeah, and so we we Bobby oh, left him like a fifty dollar tip with tip. a sarangye, yeah, like yeah. I love you. <laughs> I always do that when the, the the service is really bad. I always leave really good tips so that the next time I go in there, that they're a little nicer. It doesn't work. It doesn't work ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> like that. Ever. So you just lose a lot of money. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. my brother and I, I think, drove by it. We would drive by it just to see if he's working. Yeah. Yeah, because we would look through the window. He's there. There he is. Oh, you know what I mean? Gosh. And then we, we wouldn't eat there. We were so afraid of him. We thought that he was going to take a knife and just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just collectively just like stab us. Stab yeah. us as a family. There's another place my brother and I. <laughs> my brother and I love really shitty. So do we ever talk about this? The fish, The fish cakes? No. no. Oh yeah, the one in the mall, the oh, down yeah, yeah, the mall. We've, I already said, talked about that yeah. before. You can talk about court? it again though. Yeah, the food court. Mm. Yeah, there was this coffee shop in a Korean mall, <laughs> and my brother and I, you know, on the menu they had like these. They're not fish cakes. What they are is a dessert where it's like red bean, and then a and then they cook like um, a breading around it. Right. It's a mm-hmm. dessert, mm-hmm. but you can tell that they don't. You really use use it no one ever orders it but my brother and i didn't know any better so we were like yeah can we have that and you can tell that they were angry that we even ordered it like and that you can tell that they were like going back and trying to find the batter and you know what i mean and arguing back there like how does this even work you know <laughs> and then it took them 30 minutes to even fucking make the shit and then when it came and you can tell when they were making it they were in a really bad mood and they were like it was almost as if they were like we don't ever want to make this again, or we should get to take this off the menu. And so we we grabbed it. My brother and I grabbed it. We were laughing. We sat there. We took a bite. It was unedible. And him and I looked at each other and said, let's order it again. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so we went back and we go, 
can we order can we order that again <laughs> and and so we paid the money and then you could see them back there and then him and i we we just left left <laughs> yeah we just fucking left the fucking place I, and we do that all the time we there was a wendy's oh my gosh in koreatown where we ordered a frosty yeah. and, it, and she just was in a bad mood and so when she gave it to us i just threw it away and i just ordered another one Oh my god. So I just love because it's like fucking do your job. Yeah. Aww. Have joy. Do your fucking job. Have joy. Job. Oh, but if their job is not joy. joy. Yeah. Yes. Yes, mm. okay. And I love making people suffer when they're like being rude. Mm. Yeah, okay, That's fine. all. I'm just trying That's to teach fair. lessons, baby. Mm, that's not very Ram Das of you. Radical acceptance. That's true. Um, but so but I want to go back to the arrival though. Mm -hmm. So you know this I, this Juliana that's living with us. She hasn't seen any because she's from the Philippines, so she hasn't seen any of the classics. We're not fucking savages back home. We watch they movies. Have, I know, but they watch like their number one movie is probably Son in Law. Avengers. No. <laughs> yeah. Here's a problem with it the goes Philippines. Avengers, Son in Law, Jersey, Biodome, <laughs> Biodome. Right, <laughs> twice, twice. <laughs> yeah, you're you're really making fun of my movie choices. Yeah, so we made oh, a those list. Are yours. We were oh, arguing okay. last night That's about it. what movie should should be absolutely required for her to watch. So required reading, mm. required watching. And Bobby had he was like Casablanca. No, like, I didn't say Casa. Uh, no, I no, I didn't say Casablanca. I didn't say Casablanca because their argument is this. I hate when people have this argument. They go, well, we're younger. You know, we don't, you know, it's like, we don't, that's not our generation of mm. film. It's like, when I graduate from high school, you think that Taxi Driver is my generation? No, but like me and my friends in high school, we would go to Blockbuster and we would get every Scorsese movie we could in the 70s. I saw Mean Streets as a kid. I saw Taxi Driver. I saw Raging Bull as a kid. How did you watch them? The Blockbuster. Oh, through Blockbuster. Video. We would, there was a, you know, in Rancho Bernardo, we had a Blockbuster there. We would mm -hmm. drive there and we would rent them. I have a point to make. Go ahead. You do realize that up until four years ago, Juliana and her family were living a very difficult life. Essentially, would you say, Jules, basically in like the slums? Yeah. yeah is that something you're embarrassed about? No. no. So it, it was a one bedroom with like 10 people. Everyone slept on the floor. They were really, you know, they didn't have access to things like that. And if you did watch a movie, you would have to go to, what's that place um, where you get the bootleg? In, not in the Mercado, there was another place. Anyways, you would have to get like all the bootleg versions of everything. So like, you know, I, I, okay. and you don't have money to go to the movie theaters because that's a very big luxury, isn't it Jules? Yeah. So finally, when her mom became, you know, when her mom opened up a business and her dad became a judge, Ooh. Um, they all of a sudden came up and have this great home and now they can go to the movie theaters. But that wasn't until like four years ago. So, so much of her life didn't have those luxuries like Blockbuster. Has she seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Have you seen Chitty Chitty okay, Bang if Bang? Somebody, if somebody grew up in a cave, if somebody grew up in a cave, okay, right? Yes. And they came out, they still knew English, right? They knew some, the language. They knew what films were but they'd never seen it because they grew up in a cave right the first fucking movie i'm, I'm gonna show them isn't Ch chitty chitty bang bang <laughs> uh, right yeah it is. what's no, the first movie uh, you show no. them? have you first seen a all, bicycle give a haircut before i have it until chitty chitty bang bang <laughs> <laughs> what's yeah. the movie you you show them do okay if 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 person comes out of a cave he's been trapped there for like 40 years what's the movie don't say the gods must well, be crazy I, no, that's yeah, not I, allowed I mean, if they, they've never knew what anything. a movie was yes. yeah. then yeah. Yeah. go ahead, what do you go ahead. Then I would have to Ooh. go uh, Ooh. I mean because then they wouldn't know anything about history then do okay, they know about point. history and, and 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 are they like birth in a cave no they were birth in a cave for 40 years all right so they're the kind birth. of like feral feral yes they're feral people well then the movie I think uh, we would introduce them to foods no 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 let's go no, no. pick you a movie Bobby a movie. You can't just switch from movies to <laughs> No, but I'm saying if they grew up in a fucking cave, they don't know what a circle is. I don't care. Do they know you the English to, language? No, you have to give them a movie no matter what. What is the movie? Oh, to give God. them a sense of like reality, kind of, how the yeah. world works. Um, I say you fuck with them and just give them a rival. What I, I think the movie that I would probably... 
because it would teach them a little bit about history, but also it's kind of creative, well done. Probably Forrest Gump. Oh, yeah. That's pretty oh, good. Oh, maybe. Maybe That's he can relate good. to him a bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, My- they, but then, then again, they don't know. They don't have no reference because they're from a cave. See, they don't know what the Vietnam War was. They don't know. You know, they don't know that, True. you know, the Forrest Gump is using real life footage but like kind of changing history a little bit, you know what I mean? And putting Forrest Gump in those situations. So you would have to explain all that fucking bullshit to that person. I I think to give them a a sense, like a thematic thread of humanity, I would probably give them Toy Story. Very An simple. animation guild? An they don't know. It would freak them out. They don't know the colors. They would freak the fuck. They don't know colors? They think that's they like sorcery. <laughs> that's sorcery. It's sorcery. You to can't them. do anything super CGI. Okay, it has what, to be real you, life, like naked gun. Naked gun. Naked, biodome? gun. naked gun. naked gun. Naked gun or blood yeah, and blood they, out. Because they'll take it literally. Blood True. and blood they, out. They, they don't understand satire. They don't know satire, so they would think that what in society people just roll down a fucking stairs backwards. Okay, house party. The first stairs they see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, George of the Jungle. Oh yeah, maybe okay, that's what yeah. they're like. Okay. Oh, we 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 understand that. Wait, okay, what that about sense. airplane? That's still satire. That's still they don't know crazy. what a plane is. Do they gotta try to stop a hole in a plane with a butt? No. Yeah. Not gonna do what that. about the mannequin? What's the mannequin? The mannequin. <gasps> and we can build this thing together, babe. Kim Cattrall. I Has fuck, anyone seen the know, fucking I mannequin? Mannequin Kim, one and two? You know I fucking hate Kim Cattrall. I know, we know. Stories I shouldn't have said the mannequin. Don't fucking say fucking Kim Cattrall. We need to drop that. We need to fuck cut that so part anyway, out my Jules, voice crackles. Let's go back Jefferson to reality. Starship. Jules. Yeah. You know, so she hasn't seen certain things. So um, we, I want to make a list because we're in quarantine and I'm going to force right. her to watch certain things. But then Kalana's like, well, every other night I want to choose. Right? So she's like, you know, so, you know, so I thought the she's never seen The Matrix. Wait, wait, okay, so we start from the top. Can you guys alternate? I'm going to make this list and post it on Tiger Belly uh, Instagram so people can follow along. All right, so, so here's what one? I here's my list of mandatory things that she should see. Okay? Mm, I'll take a go. Right, you I'll go first. I'll go first, them. okay? Yeah. So, taxi driver. Okay? Mine is. Just the is order as well? No, let me just do all mine and then you do all yours. Oh, okay. Is this the I, order, I named Bobby? a lot of mine already. I know, is but this the, is this the order to watch it in, or just no, no? Order? Just in because she hasn't seen any of them, right? So okay, taxi. I said Taxi Driver, great movie, Godfather One and Two, Goodfellas. Okay. I also said Shining. Scary. Never seen it. She's never seen it. I would say Blade Runner. You know, she's never seen. Any of the Aliens movies. I would say Alien 1 and Alien 2. Okay? She's never seen... Um, what else she hasn't seen? I, I, I had a whole list last night, but now... For sure, Matrix. You said Matrix. Yeah, I Matrix yeah the Matrix. She's never seen it. She's never seen the Mad Max movie. I think that's a very good movie. Oh, that's a good one. You know, the Tom Hardy one. That's very good. One. Yeah. she's. Have you ever seen any of, like, Dark Knight or any of the Batman movies? Which yeah. one? All of them, because they're big in the Philippines. Any huge like blockbuster superhero, superhero stuff, mm-hmm. all Filipinos have seen. Oh, they have seen it. Yeah. Okay. What, in- what indie? You got to give her an indie. A couple indies. Um. Well, sh- we did Twin make Falls, her see- Idaho. We did make her see the Royal Tenenbaum. She liked that. Oh yeah. So oh, I would fun. have to say Rushmore. I thought that was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Life Aquatic. Life Aquatic's very Oh, I cute. love that. It, I know, because it has to do with fucking water, bitch. I know. Baby. Dang. Baby, baby. Bitch, bitch baby. <laughs> bitch, baby. Um, she would also have to... Fantastic s- Mr. Fox. Oh, you know even better? The Isle of Dogs. <laughs> Let's go to classics, that. though. Oh. You're talking about so many years of, of, of film that she hasn't seen. Oh, like what about any Coen Apocalypse Brothers? Now. Coen Brothers oh. movies. Yeah, like yeah, there we go. Raising Arizona. Oh, great movie. That's a great mo- movie. Um, you know, No Country for an Old Men's. For an old men. You know, Fargo. <laughs> There's just so many ones. I you have a different so, list. Go, oh, I think you should watch. Yours has a very yours has a very darker theme. Kalila, do yours have any rom coms? Okay, for so her? let me be, explain to you. Um, I think that while all the movies that he's mentioned are very, very important and obviously iconic, I think that she should watch um, lighter um, films from the 90s that I grew up with, to or with. Um, for instance, Drop Dead Fred. Bobby doesn't agree. Mannequin 1 and 2. 
Oh, both. Okay. Um, look who's talking now with Kirstie Alley. No? Yeah. Hold on, I'm not done. Airplane, Naked Gun, Major League, Hot Shots, Twister, um, oh, Twister. Boys in the Hood, um, Blood In, Blood Out, House Party, Don't Be a Menace. No? I mean, if you, okay, no, I mean, yes, yes, yes. I mean, if you should do, you know, do the right thing. All Polly Shore movies. Do <laughs> all. Oh my God, Encino Man, Jules. Classic. Any Bobby Lee films, Kyla? No, no. Um, Bobby Lee films. I've had two lines in like maybe five or six movies. Who gives a both? fuck? Hey, Jules, watch both Harold and Kumar's. Those are great. I'm gonna put it out there. Overboard. You guys don't like Overboard. Goldie Hawn. I love Overboard. Oh, First Wives Club. Okay. 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 All so right. every. So just Steel remember. Steel Magnolias. Okay. <laughs> so uh, terms Jules, of endearment. Watch eighty <laughs> movies, Jules. <clears throat> Any John Hughes film? Okay. That's no. a lot of fills for her. This is a lot for her. I know, I know. We'll probably um, never get to any of them now, <laughs> you know, because it's going to be difficult to watch something like Apocalypse Now, and then the next night you're watching Mannequin 2. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's the just... The contrast. The contrast it's, is it, heavy. It's just yeah. too heavy of a contrast. Or the Bad News Bears. Okay. <laughs> are all, are well, all you know, of fuck that... the movies. Fuck the movies. We're not doing it. <laughs> Sorry. Hey guys, we're taking a quick break to share this amazing sponsor with you. Liquid IV, if you're dehydrated, uh, you guys, uh, when I'm dehydrated, I need supplements. And the one thing that we use here in the Tiger Belly household is Liquid IV. It really is. It's a stick, right? You put it in water, six ounces of water. 16 ounces of 16, water. That's what I meant. 16 ounces of water hydrates you faster and more effectively and efficiently than water fucking alone, man. Each, yeah. serving, each serving provides as much hydration as two or three bottles of water, plus vitamin C, my favorite vitamin, B3, <laughs> B5, one of my second favorite vitamin, B6, B12. Not big fan of B12, but I'm kidding. I love B12 as well. If you're <laughs> dehydrated... If you're dehydrated, try Liquid IV. It's the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. You know, also, uh, Liquid IV has a sleeping powder as well mm. that I use to go to sleep at nights, and it really works very well. Mm -hmm. um, tell them more about it. I use Liquid IV um, when I'm working out, and I just put one little packet in my water bottle, and it holds me over, feels stronger. I mm -hmm. feel like I have enough, all the adequate electrolytes to carry on more strongly in all my workouts. Yeah, believe it or not, dehydration occurs daily in three out of four people. Three out of four? What? That's crazy. <laughs> Which leads to daily headaches, dizziness, brain fog. I hate the brain fog. Mm. Uh, muscle fatigue, muscle cramps, dry skin, and more. Tell us more about it, Gil. Liquid IV is available nationwide at Target, Whole Foods, and Costco. Or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code BELLY at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use the promo code BELLY at liquidiv.com. Better hydration today at liquidiv.com. Promo code BELLY. You can also find them nationwide at Target, Whole Foods, or Costco. Better help. Usually I do a jingle when, I, when we do these ads, but I'm not doing a jingle for better help because it's a serious um, service that we have here. Um, you know, for me, therapy has been, I've said this before, I'll say it again, a lifesaver. And BetterHelp will access your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You okay? can start communicating with them too in under 24 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of ex expertise in BetterHelp's counselor network, which may not be locally available in many areas. Um, Jules did it. Uh, I do it. She does Bobby it. Bobby does it. Yeah, it, it really is. And the service is available for clients worldwide. Like my cousin in Germany just signed up for it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important, especially during this time. It's very uncertain to make sure that, you know, your head's good, your grass is green, that you're feeling good mm. on the inside. They're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they can make it so that you can make it easy and free change. You can free to change counselors if needed. You'll get yep. timely and thoughtful responses, <laughs> plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. It's also affordable, guys. It's really affordable. It really is, though. Yeah. Comparatively, I'm not kidding you guys, it really, really is. You're going to mm -hmm. get a lot of bang for your buck. Tell them more, Gilgo. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. 
visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Belly. That's Better H-E-L-P and join over 500,000 people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Special offer for Tiger Belly listeners. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. You know, why am I like that? You know, I, you know I, why do I talk the way I do? People do impressions of me. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? And they're so erratic and, you know, and uh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, what? Johnny Sanchez does an impression of me where he goes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, Dude. that's not, how, is that how I talk? Not, not, you're, you don't talk like that at home. You're actually very calm. I think when you get around people, you, you put on uh, more of a, like this thing you do that people are not aware of. And then I got a bunch, a barrage of emails about it. They're like, Bobby had a facial twitch and a stroke, you know, during his that. podcast with Eric Griffin. Yeah. And I'm like, no, he's trying to be eccentric. He did that with me in the first couple dates. <laughs> yeah. He starts to do this thing where it's like, he, he like talks to himself yeah. and then he'll do yeah. like this weird, like, the thing like that with yeah. a facial twitch, yeah. And then I'm like, "Hey, are you okay?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm fine." <laughs> are you? It's, okay? it's, uh... And he does it when he like tunes out, like when someone's saying yeah. something and he doesn't like it, and he doesn't want to listen, then he starts doing the facial twitch thing. Yeah, I'll do it. It's so rude, but you know, it's all about. Um, oh, this is so gross. No, do it. I'm gonna say it, but it's so gross. It's it back to in the day where you know I used to observe you know other eccentric people. You know, like I'd be at like, I already told you about this, but I'd be at a coffee shop in the early 90s and I'd see like some kid in, in a local band. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I would observe the way, you know, and they have they probably have some sort of Asperger's or some sort of like real con- twitch condition. Mm-hmm. But I would like memorize all the way they would sit and walk and all that kind of stuff. And I, I do that, but I don't really have. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm false. No. Yeah, I have a fa- no. false. No, I'm I would false, say so. But I have a false personality. So what if you mirror a few I have people? Vertigo. I had vertigo this morning. Oh, I wow. Could pro- I probably have a good explanation for that. I woke up yesterday and today where I stood up and the whole world, the whole room was spinning. Mm. Yeah. And I can't walk. I start like falling, wanting, wanting to fall over. And I think it's a stroke or something. Mm-hmm. And then... um. It takes me about an hour, 45 minutes to get my bearings straight because I'm so dizzy. Mm-hmm. And then um, then, I, then I get all scared because maybe I'm, you know, I'm getting so old I'm dying or something. Most of the time, vertigo is benign. I had vertigo so much when I was growing up because I had swimmer's ear. And okay. um, so I had a lot of like ear infections growing up. And, you know, your inner ear, the vestibule in your ear is responsible for your balance and equilibrium. Mm. So when you shove those wax things in your ear so deep inside, I am guessing like there is some type of like buildup in your ear that's causing an imbalance. Yeah, because I, I take these these wax things and I, pl- I shove them into my ear so that I can he- so I hear no sound. Mm. And then I'll put like a really tight kind of eye mask on. So that I can go into a coma, you know, but then when I wake up now, I get really dizzy and I can't walk for an hour. So I don't know. I mean, you know, I, Kalila has some health conditions right now. Tomorrow we're going to the hospital. Oh, Which scary. we don't want to. I've tried to I've tried to um, hold off until after all of this is happening, but I've been unwell since February. So, yep. yeah. So um, tomorrow it's going to be a journey. We're going to drive to the hospital. I'm going to have my mask and my gloves on. Julie, you coming? No, oh, no, no. Don't expose her to anything. So Juliana's not coming tomorrow? No, in fact, I'm probably going to, when I get out, I, I don't want you near me for like two weeks. What? Yeah, she's going to rent a hotel. No, she, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> okay. She's going to stay here. No, she's not going to. No. Listen, it, just be mindful and just, you know, I, I'm not worried about you. You're you're the you you should you're the way everyone should be acting. She is so paranoid about it. She's so mindful and very specific and very um clinical think, about everything. I don't think I'm paranoid. I think I'm like you said, I'm mindful. Like I know how you know, I tutored microbiology for four years. Yeah, I know I mean, how things <laughs> stick. But here's some brighter news. You wanna hear some brighter news when it comes mm. to us? Yeah. Right? We're having a baby. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my God. We're not cutting that out. That's that's turning clip. And it's we're be cut a baby. right there. 
I almost looked to my left like, who's having a baby? No, uh, that's not why we're going to the hospital. No, we're not by going the way, hospital, yeah. we're going to the Wait hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Wait going to the hospital, not for a fucking ultrasound or anything. I'm getting a barium yeah. X-ray because. That GERD, remember I was like, oh, I'm having reflux in February, it turned and it spiraled into this whole thing where I, it's it's uh, so much pain and pressure in my chest and now I think I have a hiatal hernia. Hey, I think it's a hernia, what's your money on, cancer? No, I don't think it's cancer, I think that it's a uh, some sort of <laughs> okay. obstruction. I think you ripped a muscle or something. That's not an obstruction, though. A hiatal hernia is when your stomach pushes past your diaphragm. Okay. Yeah, but more specifically, what's the kid's name going to be? Huh? Oh, what's the oh, kid's name Juana. Mm. Tijuana. No, Juana. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, T and then Juana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Tijuana, you were upset that I said on Bad oh, Friends. Oh, my God. No, it wasn't Bad Friends. Did you guys um, watch the... Oh. Um, the what? comedy store fundraiser podcast oh, yeah. thing they did. Pers- I saw some of it. Yeah. Hey, fuck you. I like oh, it. All right. I like it. Here's the thing. Okay. All right. I'll, I just let me just defend myself when it comes to those. We did comedy aid with yeah. all those guys, and then we also did now the comedy store one. It was mm-hmm. my hour was me, Delilah, well, Come On, um, Tim Dillon, and who else was on? Oh, and I was with Santino, right? Yeah. So, you know, number one, um, the connection isn't good. So there's a yeah. delay. There's audio problems. There's humming going on. Number two, you know, when you're not in the same room, it's just so difficult to do, mm-hmm. to connect mm-hmm. with the people you're doing it with. So, you know, at one point, you know, Joey Diaz in the second hour showed his nutsack. Oh, he did? God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I would have wanted to see that. Yeah, and I almost did that for the first hour, but I'm like, ah, oh, maybe too much. But, um... My point is, is that I didn't know what else to do, so I showed not the actual hole of my butthole, you but the not. you know the crevice or the opening part. Oh, that's not a big deal. That's, that's not acceptable. that big a deal. That's acceptable. S- but during the fucking, I didn't know what else to say. So during the the comedy thing, I said, um, I think Whitney asked me how many prostitutes I've had or whatever, oh, and yeah. I just made, I said, what would I say? Three fifty. You said three fifty. Yeah, Bad ballpark. You said three hundred. Yeah. Three three fifty. Yeah, oh my god! So what's your problem? Because, God, this is so unethical. What's the problem? He did something that was just so a big no no. And if you any kids listening, do not be like Bobby Lee in this regard. I mean, when he, we first he started dating. The economy, though. When I, we first started dating, I was like, oh, you know, no judgment. Don't care how many people you've been with, but you know, can you get tested? Mm-hmm. Um, I got tested. Show him my stuff, whatever. Um, and he oh, was like. like Oh, uh, I recently got tested, like, last week. I'm all good. And I didn't know him very well, and I should have gotten proof, but I was, like, you know, just whatever. And so I was like, yeah, it's fine. So, we like, we got it on and stuff. But, oh, my God, and the thing last week, he said he's been with 350 prostitutes, and I don't know how my vagina is still intact or alive or breathing or even still a vagina that hasn't mm. morphed into just a giant ball of mold. Mm. Like, how is this just not a giant tumor down here? Or that I'm not dead. And I'm not to say that... And it's not because he's been with prostitutes. I don't care if it's if it's a, a, a sex worker or a regular woman. It's just that I know him. He's raw-dogged his whole life. Mm. He's just raw-dogged his whole life. So this is why you're going to the hospital. This is why I'm going to the hospital. <laughs> We're, having ba- We're having a baby. Having a, baby. <laughs> a little baby's coming. No, okay, so uh, I that was. Shit, it shook me. It shook me. It shook me. I went to uh, Juliana's room. I knocked and I was like, Jules! It shook me. Jules! It I thought shook you knew me. this, Kalila. What? I thought you knew this. No, I knew. I don't care about his past. I just know that he just likes to not put a fucking hat on. That's not here. That's not it, okay? Here, here. My whole thing in comedy, especially. You know, I was talking to the Sklar brothers the other day. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Randy and the other one. And <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Randy and Jason. Randy, Tandy. Yeah, yeah. And I remember um, when I first met them in the late 90s, they came up to me. They saw me perform. And they came up to me. And they pulled me aside, I remember. And they said, listen, dude, you're like a really funny guy. But can you turn the air off? They said, you're a really funny guy. But 
you're just we don't know anything about you. You're so not real. We don't know. And then it's so funny because I did Caliendo's right and Frank Caliendo's podcast last week, and Caliendo said the same thing. He said, "When I first met you, you were just so not real. Like you did, we didn't know anything about you. You didn't uh -huh. reveal anything about yourself. You were like a closed book. So then we just didn't know what was going on with you." And that's how I kind of, you know, survived in the early stages of this career of just being just uh, this really, really mysterious closed book. And then, I don't know, through time, I just realized that, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm just going to just say real things and not hide anything from anybody. I think that really mm -hmm. helps me when it comes to doing podcasts and whatnot. But it backfires as well because I say things that, <laughs> you know, are real you know because i don't have a filter mm -hmm. now and um it gets me in trouble so y yeah, yeah yes okay yes <clears throat> there were times in my life where i fucking was a you know whore fuck machine and i paid i would go to tier one I, I, I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you i'll tell you i'll tell you we, i'll tell you we, we have, take it easy i have feelings <laughs> oh sorry I'm, i'll gently tell you thank you in a very you so a very very calm way my, my point my, yeah. side, my bad i mean is uh, uh, in when I was young, when I lived in San Diego, in Tijuana, I probably had, probably in that time span, a hundred. From the age of seventeen to twenty-three. Okay, I wore a condom every single time. I trust me. I I didn't know Spanish. I I I wanted to not wear one, but. <laughs> <laughs> they would force it on me. So, um, thank God. That's the honest truth. Okay. Thank God. So then, you know, when I started doing stand up, I didn't do it for a while because I started getting real girls, right? In San Diego. Oh, real. Okay, gotcha. But then when I moved up to LA, it was infinitely harder because, you know, LA is about, you know, I mean, status. And, and I was so poor and I had no money. I mean, I was just trying to survive. So I would, me and a bunch of comics would, take a bus we would rent a van and we would take a road trip to Hawaiian Tijuana Gardens. no oh. Tijuana uh, Hawaiian I don't know Gardens if, was in um, no I never told you this but oh gosh, and there were some big comics along this is we were younger but there were some big comics in the van as well okay that are big now but I cannot mention their names obviously when but um it. we would go down there and we would do like sort of like it was like a fight club kind of a thing Oh we'd, we'd be at the comedy store and we'd all wink at each other and then we would get in a van and we would go down there and then one comic who I've had a falling out Wait, with. Wait, who owned a van? We rented it. <laughs> like a sprinter it was a Hertz. van? Hertz owned it. <laughs> like one of those white vans. That, or like oh, an Astro okay. van. Like a van. A white one, yeah, yeah. We'd rent a van. We'd go down there and then one of the comics got beat up He's a big guy now, but I can't say his name. He got his ass beat up. I know, I'm not going to tell you. Okay. I know who it is. I know you know. I'll you know who it is. I right? can just guess. But don't say it out no, loud. I won't don't say it out don't loud. guess out loud. Will you tell text, me later? Text oh, me, I know though. who it is. Text me you right now, though. Yeah. No, no, we're not going to tell you. <laughs> and then I remember it, us going, but then I remember I, me going, oh, I'm out. I can't do this anymore. So then, but they started doing it without me. In fact, they would do like not a van ride, but they would take four guys. And I know that at one point, my little brother Steve would go down there as well. So no more van, just sedan? Like a sedan. Okay. Yeah. And then some weird shit happened, and they stopped doing it. So then what I resorted to is me and some really big comedians, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean. Stop <laughs> saying really I know, I want to have to say it. They're, hey, they're big. And it, this, this will never come out of, out of my mouth. I'll never say the names. But you guess. <laughs> You guess. And we would go to this place called Hawaii Theater. Oh, it's not oh. Hawaiian Gardens. It's not Hawaiian Gardens. Hawaii that's Theater. A, that's a restaurant. In the city, in the city of industry. Of, exactly. City of industry. And we would go there and then we would do. And then when I went to, then I went to, I went to Thailand, mm -hmm. I did about 25 or 30 there. Whoa. I did five or six in, um, in Australia. Oh yeah, well it's the brothels there. Yeah, yeah, um, legit. Beirut, once, um, but then Vegas, probably over. I don't know, hundred, hundred fifty times. 
Yeah. Could you re- so could, could so you it just adds up through time. How many people do you think I've been with? 30. How do you know? <laughs> I just guess. I, I know yeah. the names. That's a good guess. Yeah, I know the names. Yeah. yeah. Well, you yeah. know the you names? You know all their names? No, but I know I, I know, I know, I know, know a lot of the, you know I know a lot of the characters in this if, if this for, 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 forbidden tale. Do you know and this, how is my character? Very dark, you forbidden of 15, tale. Do you know half of them at least by name probably? I, hang on. I just I also want to say you don't have that to say if, it. You don't have to say it. I'm just curious. If I if if male Oh God! No. <laughs> Take yeah, that out. Yeah, Last yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. We're not gonna cut. That's bleeped uh, out. Yeah, yeah. We're you got to be cut. careful yeah. with. Oh, that's bleep. Oh, yeah, that's right. bleep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just bleep those names. He's okay. about to get married with a child. Be Doesn't careful. matter. I know the names, baby. Okay, who else? All right, helicopter English helicopter pilot. He's not a helicopter pilot. He's a boxer. That? Oh, whatever. Bleep that. In- <laughs> bleep that. You don't have to bleep that. Not he didn't say the okay. name. He doesn't know the name. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then there was that young a guy. That, guy? Jeez. All right. Yeah, there was a young guy. When I first dated her, there was a kind of a thick young guy that was also hanging out. That there was, they stopped seeing each other. But that guy, what's his name? Oh, he was just. Yeah, a yeah but, I know, but you did fuck him, right? Like pr- before meeting you. Yeah, but yeah. He, you did fuck him though, right? Yeah. Well, then there we go. Bing. He was a baseball player. Bing, baseball player. No, no, no. But he's a cop now. He's a cop. Bing, bing, bing. Right. Got one dude. He was right? cute, huh? What, uh, do you think he was cute? Yeah, two roommates there. One yeah. guy, right? And then mm-hmm. the, the one that used to be your boyfriend. Sure did. Gang bang, gang bang all day. <laughs> okay. Are you going to delete that or no? The gang bang part? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah well, don't why? Could, I, I don't care. It's very uncomfortable. Want. Don't gang bang. I don't care. What do you mean? Don't Just... gang bang. Well, on a lighter note, do you guys remember your first love? Well, Jules right here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hold on, should we get to Gabby first? Do our welfare well, check? We're actually kind of far into the podcast, so we could save that. If you no, want. no, no, no. We'll we, uh, this we is a good. We're on a roll. I'm not gonna, I, I told okay, her yeah. it would happen for real this time. Don't make me skip it again. <laughs> if you, well, if I, was, you... I was trying to read your text. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Wait, 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 Oh, yes. So Bobby and I, the other day, we were talking about how, like, you know how there's always, like, you have this idea, oh, that person was the one that got away, or mm-hmm. ever, whatever happened to this person, or what if, and, you know, do you just have these, like, fantastical scenarios of, like, a love unfinished, you know? And we got to thinking that, well, at least for me, that a lot of times in my experience, because of the way that I am as a person where I have to see things through, I have to know what's at the other, um, what's at the end of that rainbow, if it even is a rainbow. And I ruin the magic of a memory. Mm. And I've done this with a lot of, um, with a lot of uh, ex hookups. For example, I was in Spain, you know, I was in Europe and I had this like two night stand with this like amazingly, we had this like deep, deep, deep connection with this guy. And it was just the most magical two days I'd ever really spent with anybody. I should have left it there. I should have never continued to Skype with him or talk to him or gotten to know him because it just turns out that he is kind of a misogynistic asshole. But if I had left it at those two nights, I would have had that memory and that feeling and that magic of like, oh, I wonder how he's doing. Yeah, I was like... Talking about, yeah, I love that because there's sometimes where I'm at an airport. This has happened a couple of times in my life where I'd be at like a restaurant at an airport and a young woman that's very attractive will sit next to me, right? And we'll share a glance, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, you know, women don't generally look at me and go, there, I want to fuck that guy or, you know, or attracted to me. I'm just, I'm a weird looking, but every once in a while I could get a vibe, you know what I mean? And then we'll have like a little banter, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, in my heart, I'm like, get her number, get her number or whatever, right? This is when I've been single. And I don't, well, I'll just get on my flight, right? And there's, and you fall in love in a split second, you know, with a stranger, right? And that just kind of, you know, always kind of, there's something kind of magical about that. I know that if we do, if I did exchange numbers and then we did see each other, it would turn bad or whatever. But mm. I kind of like those little fleeting, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to like date somebody or fuck somebody or, or control somebody or have somebody, mm. you know, 
it's almost more better just to have those little fleeting moments of of, of magic. Of magic. It's fantasy. like um, it's like lightning in a bottle. Lightning in like, a bottle. Like why would you try to recreate that? And that's the mistake I made because that person that I was um, that I had that two day romance with eventually came to the U.S. and I could not stand him. I still really can't stand him to this day. Like he is. It turns out he's like this Trump loving kind of like simpleton but a lot of a lot I still do believe that who he showed me in those two days was in a sense like his core and what I got to know after that was like the different layers of him that I just wasn't I should have never really sure bothered with mm. you know what I mean like I I don't know. I can't explain it other than sometimes unfinished love and those collection of memories that you have with people, you don't need to see those through. You can just keep them as little magic bubbles in your mind so that on a bad day you remember it and you're like, oh, yeah, that was a nice time. I also miss the unrequited love situations I was in. I don't miss that. I do. You like and I'm gonna, I, In fact, love. I'm, I'm going to say just right now, say some names of girls that probably never even knew that I had feelings for them. And the, and I remember being 18, 19, 17, 18, 19, and being in these little, you know, unrequited love situations where they had even no idea, but I would just like obsess about them and think about them and fall in love with them and be in, just in pain. We're going to take a quick break to share this awesome sponsor with you guys. <laughs> You guys, we oh. use ShipStation in our local business here at the Tiger Belly Enterprise. Mm. As folks adapt to this changing world, we are all going to be buying stuff more online than ever before. If you're an e-commerce seller, are you ready to meet the demands of our new delivery culture? Be ready with ShipStation. When you're, when you're selling online, getting a lot of orders out fast can be tough. How do you keep track of who gets what? Which shipping carrier should you use? Are you even getting the best rates? That's why you need ShipStation.com, guys. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. Just a few clicks, and you'll be managing your orders, printing out labels, and getting your products to happy customers. ShipStation makes it easy. No matter where you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, your, or your own website, ShipStation brings all of your orders into one simple interface, making them really easy to manage from any device, even your cell phone. They work with all the the major carriers, guys, like USPS, FedEx, UPS, and even Amazon Fulfillment. So you can compare and choose the best shipping solution for you and your customer. No wonder ShipStation is the number one choice of online sellers. Tell us more about it, Gil. And right now, Tiger Belly listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use the offer code BELLY. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery culture. Get started at ShipStation.com today. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in BELLY. That's ShipStation.com, then offer code BELLY. ShipStation.com. Make ship happen. Hims, hims, hims. Hey, guys, get what you need. Get it all day long. <laughs> You guys, hymns is a, a lifesaver for a lot of men, okay? I've said this before. I'll say it again. In my early 20s, I wish I had this um, this service. Uh, I was, I have, I'm was losing my hair up here. I had penis problems. And, um, what you know, I want professional fucking advice, all right? Mm -hmm. I don't need, you know, these uh, witch doctors and, uh, you know, I, you go to the gas station and they have those little purple pills that you can buy. That, that, that stuff is not... That's not mm -hmm. snake oil shit. Tell them more, man. Try it for try <laughs> hips today. Try hips today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to forhams.com slash tiger belly. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash tiger belly. Forhams.com slash tiger belly. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval and require an online consultation with the physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went in person to the doctor's office or pharmacy. Remember that's forhams.com slash tiger belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. Let's just go one step further. Because, you know, like I recently watched um, High Fidelity, the, not the old one, but the new one with uh, Zoe Kravitz and stuff. And the whole premise of that is going through, what, what does she call, like five, like, uh, like all time desert heartbreak is what she calls it. So mm -hmm. who are your five all time or at least name three all time most painful heartbreak list? But they all happened you know, in my early 20s and late teens. 
it never happened. Um. Uh, okay. I want to know. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Take it easy, though, okay? Hey, I, I'm vulnerable. I'm sick. Yeah. All right. So, um, the first one was um, there was this girl. I went to school, high school, and there was a girl I went to high school with, but her younger sister. Uh, when I graduated, right, she was only like a year or two younger than me. I used to hang out with her. Her name was Ashley Brown, right. And I remember watching like movies, a movie together at her house in, under a blanket Ooh. and just in my head, like, you know, what I mean? make a move, make a move. But but I would never do it. I was just like so stiff and just like mm-hmm. I was like, you know, the little Korean best friend. Right. And then after that was this girl named Rebecca Dreskin. I had a crush on her as well. And then we just became friends. And then, but the third was obvious. I've talked about her, Anna Bieldenis. Mm-hmm. When I w- w- went, but then there was one that happened. Um, I can't say her name, but there was one that happened before you, babe, mm-hmm. where I, I liked her, and then I knew that she had hooked up with Rem- Remy two open micers that are still kind of open micers, right? Mm. And then when I went went to make a move or whatever, she said. Um, I just want to be friends. I'm not attracted to you. But then in my mind, I knew that she had dated two guys that weren't even fucking funny. Mm-hmm. They were underneath me. Mm-hmm. And I want to say their names so fucking back. Uh, all right. Well, I'll say one of the guys' names. Lenochi. Lenochi. Oh. <laughs> fucking Lenochi. Right. Oh, yeah, I know. Michael Lenochi. So Michael Lenochi had hooked up with her. Right. And I want, and, and when she said that, I was just like, I know. Put the fucking uh, mask on. And I went I, in my head. I was just like. I'm a fucking loser. Oh my god! The other, like, if I say the other name, I don't want to fucking throw him on the wall. It makes you feel if better. If I say the other name, mm. right? It's worse than Michael Lenochi. I want to know. Uh. Uh-uh. Tell me later. Yeah, I'll tell you god, later. It's Dave Chappelle. Mm. No, it, no, it's <laughs> Michael Lenochi. It got even underneath Michael Lenochi. Yeah. Right. So, um. Um. Wow. I. Yeah, I yeah. don't have so many revelations. I. I think I've talked about my. My top three, or at least top, yeah, top five um, heartbreak list on this podcast, no? Yeah, go ahead. I, it's always in your, but you're right, it's always in your um, early 20s or in your teens. Nothing compares to that fucking pain of of being a, a, a an unsure teenager and wanting something so badly and not knowing how to navigate that whole process of feelings towards somebody. Um, no yeah, because one... you, you also think that mm-hmm. it's it's the most important thing in y- one's life. It I consumes think. your entire body when right. you're that young. When you realize that, oh no, I um career, and there yeah. are other things like health and you know. I wasn't raised right, man. Spirituality and there's uh, so many other things later in life that like mm-hmm. become f- as important or more important, and then all of a sudden you realize that you know it's um, it's just not real. Those feelings. Mm-hmm. It's more derived from your mind and fantasy. Yeah, and you, mm-hmm. you're very much still in a bubble. Like, you haven't been out there in the world yet. For me, it was... Um, Say the names, baby. Yeah, I will. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to try to... Um, to uh, oh, I know which one. I know to one hunt them down for a Patreon. Maybe I can have um, some yep. of my feelings resolved. The Filipi- Filipino guy from the Philippines, that guy. Who, Ru- Froggy? No, the guy that right now is... A, <laughs> you know, I know which one Froggy? it is. I love Jonathan Villagrasha. His nickname was Froggy. He was really fast, but that wasn't him. He wasn't my one of my No, no, no. The guy. Rates. No, no. You're not talking. About, I'm t- talking about the guy, uh-huh. right? That's um, a big business guy now, right? He's into business right now. And yeah. then earlier on, you had a crush on him. No, babe, we dated, babe. Dated. I said he was the what's first blowjob I ever his, gave. What's his name? Do we have to? Yeah, yeah. What's his name? Am I bleeping this? No, don't bleep it. What's his name? His name was Dino. Dino. <laughs> yeah. The one who picked us up from the airport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You suck the dick. You suck no, his dick, babe. Baby. No, don't see that. Uh, Dino, come in your mouth, baby. The, your mouth. <laughs> the heartbreak for me, my first heartbreak, heartbreak, or first unrequited love was um, Puerto Rican Gary. Gary Gonzalez. Hey, what's where's Gary at? But he was he was so cool amongst the other kids. He was just always and and but what he did was I I I made out with him in the back of a chemistry classroom and I did give him head 
and then it ruined my reputation for for the rest of like my entire high school. I hated high school, by the way. Um, and then everyone started calling me a face queen because I sucked <laughs> off Gary. <laughs> she's and very then, good. At, ve- Gary, she's very good at it. Uh, he'll probably agree, <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> And then he he broke my heart so She did something badly. the other day. I was just, Julian, I cover your ears. Rudy, get out of the room, please. Well, she just kind of took her mouth and just, uh, the head of my penis, and just a little suck. She went, like that, a little suck on my head of my penis. I don't do that. Yeah, yeah, and it felt so wondrous. I Juliana, don't do that. My spine Juliana. went, Juliana, get out of here. My spine went, Jules, I'm so sorry. That didn't happen. Uh, now, Jules. straight from Glendale, Gabby. <laughs> Glendale, Gabby. <laughs> where does she live? Where is she? Gabby, where is she? <laughs> oh, look at the Harry Potter background. <laughs> She's a nerd. Oh, my God. Oh, my Ooh, God. There Gabby. she is. Hey, Gabby. <sighs> There's my favorite. Finally. Yeah, it's my favorite out of Jeez. all the fucking. What are your last names? Galon. The Galons. Wow. Gabby. Wow. Fuck you, Gabby. If you were here, I'd pinch your fucking cheeks off your fucking fa- hey, face. How are you? Good. <laughs> Jeez, what an introduction. Gabby, what have you been doing? I've been working still, and I'm baking, and I'm a runner now, apparently. Oh, you're running for who? I started a 10K app, and now I'm what? trying to do a 10K by the end of this. What's a 10K app? Babe, running, babe, running. Like actual, like moving your feet. Like, oh, you know, I thought she was like. Oh, no, 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 no. no. I, I thought she was like what running, like like running for somebody, like George, like running oh, errands. Oh, oh, like a runner. Like a runner. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're literally running. Yes. You, you want to do one with me? I would never run with Why? you, Gabby. Because that's you're beneath me. <laughs> I, I run above you. Like, you know what I mean? I what float above mean, you, baby. What does that mean to run above someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, no, I'm kidding, Gabby. What do you want to run together? <laughs> After the quarantine's over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would like to run with Bobby? Sure. Yeah, I'd like to I run guess. with you too. Yeah. There's something about you that I always want to kick you. Why is that? I don't know. You told me. You're the one who jumped on my back in Hawaii. Yeah, baby. That was fun. No, you know and no I... one said anything. Literally, <laughs> all the passerbyers just walked by. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why I like you more than I like your brother okay. is because there is this um, unwarranted um, confidence you have. Unwarranted? Not unwarranted. Is it? That's, that's <laughs> not unwarranted. <laughs> that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. What I meant is, is that you have this, you have this just born um, yes. confidence and resilience about you that I enjoy. Thank you so much. I, I like people who fight back, you know? In a playful way. Also, Gabby is a medical professional. You know that. She's you're a physician's assistant, right, Gabby? I was, yes. Yeah, was. See? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She has a science brain. That's why you like her more than Gil. But that's why I like her more than you, Gil. Okay. Yeah. I'm seriously right here, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Hi, also brother. Gab. Gab, do you do you do sketch and stuff or no? No. So <laughs> she's you're not in comedy. <laughs> No, not at oh. all. That's my brother. She's you trying should. to be she's trying to be an editor. Yeah, yeah. But you know, my brother, my brother Stevie, right, wasn't a podcaster and he didn't do online stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But he realized, right, that he too had something to share and something to express. So I'm encouraging you to just How kind did of you get li- so close to the mic? Because and I just want to I'm whispering to you. Yeah. I'm I'm encouraged don't Oh, look at your flat face, just like your brother. Good eyebrows, though, Gabby. Yeah, good eyebrows. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like Shelter Island statues. Look at that. Look at those heads. My, <laughs> you know. Hey, Gab, you fucking? What? Are you fucking anybody? We're in quarantine. Are you not seeing anybody then? No. Who would I be seeing, Bobby? When's the last time you saw anybody? What does that mean? Explain that. Had She's sexual roommates. intercourse. You know what? You remember the last time you talked to me about this? What? Was when I was there for Tiffany Haddish. Uh Uh-huh. And you asked me about this, and I was like, I'm not sharing this with you, Bobby, because I don't know you like that. Good. Whoa, shit. Oh, you want to get to know a little bit of Gabby? Watch this. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) What the fuck? Hold on. Can we play this on the the thing, Gil? Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Oh my god! Don't worry, we can edit this. (laughs) 
Oh, oh wow. wow. It's like a Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> you want to see her talent, Jules? No, get on, on screen, Jules. Get on screen, Jules! She's doing karate. Y y oh! <laughs> oh! 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 Whoa! Oh, fuck! Uh, get out of here, Jules. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You, wait, wait. You know the martial, the secret fucking mar dark arts of martial arts? Yes. Look, babe, nunchucks. Hold on. Watch. It's not about me, Gabriel. It's about you. Oh, wait. That's a sword, not a nunchuck. Yeah, that's a fucking sword. Wow. Look, babe, you're not even watching. I, I, I get the gist of it. <laughs> I'm... I'm yeah. I'm mesmerized. Yeah, we'll watch it later. I get Yay. the gist of it. I get Thank intimidated. You, the reason I share this is because my sister. Oh, you shared it. The reason I share this is because she is very talented. She's very beautiful. She's very pretty. And I think we need to have some uh, set up some dates for her when quarantine Suitors? is done. Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? I got. I experienced my first unsolicited sort of penis picture because a tiger belly fan <laughs> messaged me and I said, no, thank you. So no, you thank did, you. This does not stop the penis, <laughs> by the way. It I tried it many times. It's not a Try fucking vampire. Do you know what would though? Yeah. Your sword fighting. Your sword fighting would. Yeah. That would chop oh, a lot of dicks off, are Gabby. You a, are you a black belt in anything? Yeah. Black belt karate. of what? I didn't know karate. that information. Yeah. So you think that My you and I, if we and put I, on, you know, like some, you know, protective gear and, and we did a sparring, we sparred you and I, that you would beat me? Let's set it up. Uh, I really want to try that. Do you not that. remember when you jumped on my back and I like broke your arm? Uh, you almost did break. I remember that now. You're very <laughs> yeah. strong. I didn't know what that was. I'm like, did she improvise that? Because I, I really remember, I didn't say anything. I remember you got hurt, <laughs> yeah. but you didn't like say anything. You said... I saw you sit down and grab your arm in silence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember we were that. We're all buying the fucking ice cream. Ice, ice cream, and I, I kind of <laughs> went into myself going, "That hurt unusually hurt. Am I getting old?" You just stopped because talking. That, that felt that felt like she was like that. She was really trying to hurt me. Wow, I would really like to do that. Tiger Belly fans, listen, Gabby and I, oh. when the quarantine is over, we're gonna go into a ring. I think that'd be fun to video. And let's just do a sparring thing to see how long I would last. Hang on. Since we are trying to solicit suitors, we should have oh a certain gosh. criteria for who we think. Because um, I think that Gabby is a catch and a half. She's a black belt. She's a, She was a physician's assistant. She does all the stuff. She's funny. She's hot. Everything. <laughs> what do we... What kind of man do we want for Gabby? I'll tell you, she does like Benedict Cumberbatch a lot. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> Hold on. What about the... actor. As Not an necessarily his <laughs> right. So we, we're looking at of almost like a a college educated white <laughs> white white a, a, a white, white guy who's what well, Benedict Cumberbatch. There's yeah, no one acting. whiter than him. No, my I my what do you visually like, Gabby? Like Oscar Isaac. Oh, oh. <laughs> so me. You want to, someone that looks like me. <laughs> Have you looked in the mirror? And there we go. And there we go. Oh no, he's angry. I'm sorry. I'm so sweet. Okay, it hurt. It's okay. It hurt a little bit. All right, Oscar Isaac. So yeah, that really hurt. But um, I'm just kidding. You're beautiful. I, I, do you really mean that? Yeah. No, I don't think you do. Well. I it's think that your you word can... against my word, so. I, I, no, uh, uh, no, honestly, Gab, honestly. Yes. yes, Bobby. Do I look mythological to you? Yeah, it's positive, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Yes. But so let's let's do a du a duel, and um, okay. when the quarantine's over. So what have you been doing during the day, just in terms of? So you've been running, Jumping. right? Running. I'm still You're working. You're working for George. Correct. Yes. Correct. Editing. You're baking a lot. Baking a lot. Have you watched anything that you would like to rec recommend anybody? I've weirdly gotten into a Adam Driver like hole. Obsession. Oh. All right. Yes. Very good actor. So which I'm ones? What are you watching? Wait. So you're watching Girls then? No, I'm watching mainly his movies. So I just watched Black Klansman again. I one. love that movie. Um, and Logan Lucky. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Mm -hmm. mm. It's like a heist film, but country style. Yeah, he's a very good actor. Mm -hmm. he yeah, really is great. yeah um 
All right, Gab. Well, that was a good check-in. I love you so much. <laughs> All right, you look great, and I, and we learned so much about you. Okay. Did you? Yeah. Do you miss me? <laughs> miss you so much, Bobby. Okay. I love you. Bye, Gab. Bye, Gabby. Bye. I love her so much. She's feisty. That one. Truly really is. I'm getting still. Di I'm dizzy still. Really? Yeah. Are you sure nothing is stuck inside your ear? I don't I know, but I'm, I'm really just kind of dizzy the whole time. God, that's terrifying. You want yeah. uh, unhelpful advice then? Yeah. Yeah. Unhelpful advice with Bobby and Kalila. Hello, Slept Gang. I love the show and have seen every episode. I'm a 17-year-old, and I struggle with connecting to women. I have only ever been on two dates before and never really had a real girlfriend. I still have never been kissed by someone. Mm. I have no problem making friends with girls, but when it comes to turning the relationship romantic... With women, uh, they are uninterested. I struggle to deal with my emotions and I often mass pain with comedy. I was bullied a lot when I was younger for being fat, Jewish, and having way too much body hair. I carry a lot of these insecurities with me. I don't know how to get over this mental handicap and get to a place where I can be in an intimate relationship with a woman. Thanks mm -hmm. for all the laughs. Slay, slay, uh, stay slept. Sincerely, Andrew. When you say the word handicap, though it's not a handicap. Those are those things that you're insecure about are your strong traits. They're the things that like um, you'll realize that makes makes you unique and you, right? The things that I always th was like paranoid about, I was the same way. Girls did not like me. I'm ba essentially just a thicker version of what I was when I was young, <laughs> right? But the insides are all the same and all those little insecurities the things that um, that I just kind of turned those and made them my positive traits, mm. you know. So the way I look, the way I laugh, the way um, you know, what I mean, the the awkward, the awkwardness, right? I use that, and I hate it when I talk and George looks up at the sky. This is what George does when oh, I'm talking. Oh, I know what he does. I know what he does. He, he goes, oh, he no, goes. No, no. <clears throat> And, 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 and he I'm almost thinking has about this, it. No, it I'm, makes he, you doubt I'm what you're pondering. saying. Yeah, no, no, you, you doubt what I'm saying. I hate no, it. No, I'm trying to think about my own life. I, it, it, it's my retro introspective space. Yeah. I, I, I'm being real. I, I, you know, no, I'm, I don't. You, I will sorry, defend Bobby. George. My I will face, defend you, George, yeah. because I have a worse listening face. I do this. <laughs> <laughs> and, she and, does do that, yeah. And not because I'm not enjoying what you're telling me. That's just what my face does. And for some reason, if I'm not like mindful about it, I have the worst listening face I I have ever seen on any human in my life. Mm. So I understand what you're doing. I think you were you're making taking great it the wrong points, way. Bobby. And I was thinking deeply about them. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, also, um, when you get older, like we said earlier on in the show, that you know, it's not. You will find that person, right? It, you're so young at 17. It's like, I did not find Kalila until I was 40, 40 years old, yeah. 41 years old, mm -hmm. you know? And I had gone through so many awkward phases. Like I said, I went through from 17 to 23, a prostitute phase, you know? And that's how I felt about myself. I felt like no one would love me. No one would find me sexually attractive. And I said, fuck it. I'm just going to do whatever I need to do to get off in the way I thought I needed. I thought I needed it, you know. But in retrospect, it was just a waste of time. I don't remember any of those experiences. They were. It became sort of an addiction at the time. So it was not positive, you know. But what I'm saying to you is, is that you're a young man and you will figure it out. It will, as you get older, it, I promise you, you will figure it out. But right now, all those feelings that you have are natural feelings as a, for a 17 year old. Yeah, you, you'll find that. 17 is so young still. Gilbert, do you think you're in the game Red Dead Redemption? What are you drinking out of? What do you mean? What were you just put? Cup. Oh, I thought it was a metallic, I thought you had a pot. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> what? Are you dizzy? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think I'm getting dizzy. Dude, yeah, I'm getting really dizzy. I'm getting so anyway. Um, I gotta go. I'm getting dizzy. All right. Uh, wait. One quick, uh, really quick one. Uh, this guy. I'll just read it really quick. Hello, Papa. Wanted to see any recommendations from the Slep King and Coloco on where to stay in Hawaii. Me and my wife have been to Waikiki on our honeymoon, but I've been curious to find a better location. We are 26 year, 26 year, 26 years old at the moment. What do you, suggestions do you guys have? From Waldo? wait, hang on. Why are they traveling right now? <laughs> Not now, but like uh, when this is all over. 
Um, Probably like an well, anniversary. I think I think Kalila would know more. I, I mean, I you know, I I think I, that Waikiki they've done the classic. is they've, yeah. Waikiki is a fucking nightmare. Tourist. But that's just me. A I would lot just of go to a different island. It. No, no, no. Wait, Oahu is amazing. If you find, I would find an Airbnb on you know the other side of the island, either like North Shore or anywhere but Waikiki. I don't think you're gonna lose. But mm-hmm. no Waikiki. It's go terrible. To, go to steak though. Bobby go took to me there. Bobby took me there. David Spade eats there. It's delicious steak. What's it where? Steak. You took What's me the there. What's the place called? Steak. It's not called steak. It's not called it's not. steak. What is it called? No, no, it's called strip steak. Strip steak. Okay, guys. Go to strip steak. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. No, babe, babe, you want to go to Donald's? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to Donald's. Yeah. Okay. Go to Bell, guys. You know go, to, go to Bell. Fine. Yeah. Fine. They have a you know what? You, yeah. were, you were stupid. It was a pot the whole time. I tricked you. <laughs> <laughs> you have vertigo. <laughs> Did you really drink out of that pot? <laughs> yeah, it did. yeah. Oh God! Thank God! I thought I was losing You're my fucking crazy, mind. Right? Oh my God! I was just like, Oh my God! I'm getting dizzy. I'm losing my mind. I thought I had an old timey fucking Red Dead Redemption pot that he was drinking out of. All right, uh, good. Anyway, um, thank you for listening to another episode of Tiger Belly. I love you guys. Uh, you can find us on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. And uh, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Yo, yo, I want to start and thank our spot. And hashtag uh, why'd you start me like that? Why'd you, why'd you start? Worthy. Thank our sponsors. Because a white guy can't not hear a beat and try to rap. You know what I mean, dog? Dog. Oh, right. yeah. dog. oh we got a little bit of Urban Gill here. Urban what Gill, up, thank you for being dog. more cringy than me. <laughs> <laughs> what up, play? <laughs> Anyways, we're annoying everyone. Thank you to Liquid IV, Better Help, Ship Station, and For Hims for sponsoring this episode. George, tell us about Liquid IV. Liquid IV. Uh, get the 25% off anything when you uh, order at liquidiv.com and use the promo code BELLY. Yeah, start living your happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash belly and get 10% off your first month with the code TIGERBELLY. And if you want to make ship happen in this online world, uh, go to shipstation.com and enter the code BELLY. Also... For all your men's needs, uh, go to forhims.com slash tigerbelly. Yes, and guys, if you'd like to send in a question like our good friend Waldo, uh, all you have to do is email us at adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. So I wanted to see George drink that water. Because you, you're a loser. You have one cup. Have more cups, bro. <laughs> uh, and also, guys, our meme contest. We are still doing that. So make sure you make a meme of this episode. Post it on Tiger Belly's Instagram or uh, Twitter with the hashtag Tiger Belly meme. And we will select a winner for this week and you'll get a grab bag. George, and any other announcements? Special, that we need special to make? announcement. Uh, things special might announcement? be uh, bubbling up over at the Patreon again. Get out of um, here. No, get it's true. Here. It's true. It's true. Uh, we'll <laughs> see what all we get on there before, uh, before this week is out, but we'll probably yep. get a vlog up on the Patreon. Not any vlog, dude. Not any oh. vlog. <laughs> one year in the making. Actually, fully one year in the making. <laughs> it's one year. The, it actually is one year in the making of this vlog. It's the, uh, Philippines vlog. Um, so make sure you yes. check that out when it comes out. Cause it's literally, it's like an actual so here's the funny thing about Tiger Belly. It's like George always talks to me about like new media. New media is the future. Like traditional media takes too long to develop things. I waited a whole year for a goddamn <laughs> vlog on YouTube, George. It's still traditional media. It's still traditional media. Hey, there's a lot of special stuff in this. A lot of editing in this vlog. We'll see if it uh, it exports right finally. Uh. Uh, but yeah, guys, there's going to be on the new- Patreon is relaunching. Just to clarify that we are relaunching. Uh, it's about to start up again. Uh, we'll get in me and George. Not only are we getting a new vlog popping up, hopefully, uh, me and George are going to do a live stream. George, can you tell us a little bit about that live stream? Uh, well, if you're an audio listener this, uh, tonight, probably if you're listening on Wednesday, uh, or just wait this evening, uh, 3 PM, uh, we're going to be, uh, taking all your questions and, uh, getting your, uh, what you want to see from the Patreon. So, uh, yeah, we'll give you guys a a, kind of like some of our, our, our ideas that we're going to be doing on the Patreon. Some of the things you could expect, uh, the next couple of months until the end of time. Um, also just to clarify also the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The live stream, George is 3 PM Pacific 
standard time. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. The only Just time that matters. Come on. Right? And I, come people on. are like, when does the flow come out? It's like LA here, in, here, here in Guam, it's 3 a.m. I'm like, I don't follow your Guam time, bro. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles. Also appreciate you guys. Uh, anything else they need to know, I George? Where can, they find the, where can they find the Patreon? Uh, I think it's just patreon.com slash tigerbelly. Or there you search go, guys. tigerbelly on Patreon. So if you um, are listening to this. link somewhere too. Yeah, check uh, link in description. Uh, me and George will see you there. And uh, let's build this Patreon together. Let's build this kingdom of a community together, all you sleepers and papayas. Uh, once again, you can follow me at Kilbits, Bobby at Bobby Lee Live, Kyle at Clem DK, George at George underscore Kimmel. Uh, you can follow my sister, I guess, at Gab's a Million or Gabble's Goodies. Uh, and then follow Tiger Belly on Instagram at Tiger Belly and on Twitter at the Tiger Belly. We love you so much. George, any final part of words? Thank you all. Stay safe.